Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about how users can model curved beams in Revit. Specifically, we're going to focus on creating curved beams in the horizontal X, Y axis, aka in plan views. And then we're going to follow on with showing you how to create the beams in the Z axis through your elevation and section views. Following on from that, we're going to cover some additional workflows users should be aware of, such as how to apply secondary steel beam systems that follow the primary curvature of your roof. Then we're going to look at how we can apply a beam that follows the underside of an organically created roof, architectural roof shape. And finally, similar to what you see in front of you here, we're going to look at how we can create a curved beam that follows across all three axes at the same time, the X, Y, and Z planes. As ever, if you find this content helpful, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell icon. It really helps the channel out a lot and allows me to continue producing high quality tutorials such as this. I've also included timestamps for the video in the description below. If you feel that you're familiar with any part of what I'm doing, you can just skip to the next very quickly. I won't delay any further. Let's get into it. Step one, how to model horizontally curved beams in the X, Y axis in Revit. So you can see our sample building here. It's the start of a, a small um, structural steel building that we have. And I want to show an extrusion basically that is curved emanating from this side of the building here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to a relevant plan view. And in this instance, I'm going to go to our ease level structural plan. And you can see that at grid line six, I want to add a curved beam that bows out like this. So if I go to my structure tab, beam or BM as the short cookie, you will be brought into the beam creation menu. Here on the left-hand side in properties palette, you can select your member type. So I'm going to select a 305 member here. And then under the draw tools at the top, you can see that we have multiple draw tools. We have a line tool or we have various curved art tools. So you need to pick which one of these are going to suit your needs. You could use a spline, a partial ellipse. You could use the center ends arc. You could use a start end radius arc, which is the kind of typical way of drawing an arc from AutoCAD. There's multiple options there. And the reality is you should familiarize yourself with each of these anyway, because they they appear in all the the majority of the draw tool sets in Revit. So once I've selected my member, we're on our placement level that we want, the eaves plan level, and you can see that our placement plane is the eaves level. Structural usage I've set to automatic, you can change that if you wish, but I'm just going to ensure that 3D snapping is also on because I want to connect uh, to our members here. So in this instance, I'm going to use the start end radius arc because that's going to allow me bow out directly from the center as this grid line is in the middle of the overall span. So selecting the top, the point of our structural column and then going to the point of our next structural column, I can then bow this out as I wish by any sort of value. You can work to a designated value as you wish, but as this is just a visual exercise, I'm just going to click on space there. And that's as simple as it is to create a beam in the XY axis. Going back to the 3D, you can see that it's coming out in the same plane as our eaves beams. There's another item to note here that these curved beams are not just um, functional from the steel members, but they actually work for any type of beam member, structural framing member. So going to the right hand side here, I'm going to just copy this member loosely down to the top of our foundations here. And from there, I'm going to change the member type to a concrete rectangular beam. So 300 by 600 here. And I want you to note that, first of all, it still maintained the curvature of the beam. So it matches the curvature of the center line of the beam above, but also it automatically joins with the structural elements below. So this works for both your structural steel members, your concrete members, and the likes of your ground beams as well. So that finalizes step one, how to model horizontally curved beams in Revit. Step two. How to model vertically curved beams in Revit so that they, the curvature expands into the z-axis. So this is a little bit different. The functionality is much the same, but what you need to do first is designate a plane for the, um, the, the beam to follow. So what we want to do in this instance is I want to create a curve from this upright to this upright that meets at the top of this member here. Okay. So I'm going to go to our south elevation as it is on the south elevation. And you can see our central member there and our two columns on either side. I can then just press BM as the shortcut key to bring me into the beam tool. And again, I can select our start end radius arc. Please note that you may actually get uh, requested by an, a, a properties box here if you haven't already done it previously in your project file to pick your placement plane. 
but this option is also available here. On our ground floor, on our eaves plan, you can see that our grid level six, our grid six, is the one that we want to apply this beam to. So again, I'm going to go back, press BM to bring up the dialog there, and I'm going to make sure that my placement plane is set to grid six. If you do not select a placement plane, you will not be able to draft your beam in the elevation or section view. Ensure your 3D snapping is on as before. And again, I'm going to use the start end radius arc. I'm going to select the top of my column and again, top my column. And I'm just going to expand it to meet the intersection of the grid there. And now going back to our 3D view, you can see that we've one continuous curved beam. So again, we can now copy this all the way down our building. So going to our eaves level again with that selected, I'm going to press copy. I'm going to press multiple and I'm just going to copy to each grid as such. So now you can see that we have all of our primary steels in place. And then pressing SL, I'm just going to split the beam on top and you can see that it splits equally on both sides of the column. Okay, and I'm going to split, split on the opposite end. And finally, just to finish this out, I'm going to go to my structural tab, sorry, my modify tab, and I'm going to press notch. Okay. And this could be called notch or it could be called cope, depending on what region your program is installed in. So selecting our primary curve beam there, I'm going to select the beam below and selecting it again, I'm going to select the column and you can see that we have a much neater detail. And again, I'm going to do it on the reverse side and on the opposite end of the building. And this concludes step two, how to model a curved beam in the Z axis in Revit. Step three, how to place secondary beams that follow the curved primary roof structure in Revit. More specifically, how to create a beam system to carry multiple secondary steel members that follow the curvature. So there's um, intuitively, you might think that you can add your secondary steel members by just selecting beam, making sure 3D snapping is on and going from member to member like this. Okay, but the difficulty with this is you can't actually get the snaps you need to make it per perpendicular. So as you can see, I drew that in there now, but when I return, it's not dead straight. It's got a, it's got a turn and it. it's very difficult to set it out when you're working on the curvature. More importantly, it's very difficult to get an even spacing down the actual length of the curvature for these members. So let's say you wanted these at an increment of, you know, two meters or 2,400 millimeters, you might find yourself in a situation that you cannot get this 100% spot on in terms of the setup. So what we want to use is a beam system. So how do we tell the beam system that we want to array basically a series of members that follow the curvature with a standardized spacing? So the first way to do it is actually quite straightforward. Going back to our eaves level, I'm going to go to beam system. And I'm going to select my fixed distance as 2400, as I already said, and I'm going to set my beam type as a UB127. And what we can do with the automatic beam system button is I can basically select a boundary. Because I'm selecting this boundary here, I am creating a series of members that run parallel to that boundary. So this boundary is dictating the beam span direction for the system. And that's the span direction I want. As you can see, if I highlight this, it's going to go in the opposite direction, which is the span direction I don't want. So we're going to select this one and I'm going to just click in space. I'm going to press escape. And when I go to the 3D view, you can see that that is already automatically following the curvature of the roof. And the great thing about that is we can highlight that beam system. And again, I can change that value to 1800. And we automatically populate with more members with equal spacing down the length of it. So that is the easiest way of associating your beam system to the curvature. It's by automatically selecting the bay and Revit will pick up the curvature and assign it to it. You can do this manually as well, and you may have to do it manually if the automatic feature is not functioning ideally, okay? So I'm just going to delete that again, and we're gonna go back to our ease level. I'm going to select beam system, and I'm gonna go sketch beam system, and I'm gonna draw my boundary from center point there across to the center point there. And I'm going to set my beam system as such. Now you're going to notice that when I finish this, it's not going to follow anything. It's not actually following any of the curvature um, elements that we need, the curved elements that we need. So what do we need to do here? Well, we need to actually create it so that it hosts onto our members. So deleting that away again, 
we are going to go to our beam system and we're going to, instead of creating a boundary line, we're going to pick our supports. So I'm going to pick the curve member there, the return member at 90 degrees, the two opposing curve members and the final. And you can see now that we have a full enclosed loop because it catches the distance between the two and bridges the gap and uh, subdivide and it bridges and um, closes the two lines together basically. And then what we need to do is we need to, see, need to set our beam direction to the direction we want. So it's going to run parallel to this direction. Again, we're going to leave it at 2400 fixed spacing and I'm going to press finish edit mode. And now you can see that manually we pick the elements we wanted to act as the supports and the beam system curves accordingly. And as before, we can change our spacing and it'll automatically update with more members. So that's step three on how to play secondary steel beam members that follow a curved primary roof structure in Revit. Step four, how to attach beams to a sloped architectural roof in Revit. So there's two ways of doing this. The first way I'm going to show you is the more straightforward way and it's better from a BIM process. The problem is, is it doesn't automatically update with the architectural roof changes. And the second way is not necessarily BIM good practice, but it should automatically update. So it's a, it's a case of picking your poison, all right? So the first way of getting a beam to follow to the underside of this architectural roof, if you have a look in 3D, it's just kind of a, a simple extrusion or organic extrusion that's kind of like draped. Um, and we want our beams to follow the underside of this. So in order to do that, we're going to press BM as we did before and selecting our placement grid as grid one in this instance, 3D snapping is on, that's irrelevant in this case. But what we're going to do is we're going to pick lines and I can basically pick lines to the underside of the roof and as you can see it automatically generated the beam there and that beam is a legit beam it can be tagged and it can be um, presented within schedules and that kind of thing okay so that's the most straightforward way of doing it the difficulty here is that if you have any roof edits whatsoever you lose the association of the beam to the new roof profile so the second way i'm going to show you is actually to leverage truss families in Revit but you're only going to use the top cord of the truss. So looking at our structure tab we can go to truss and in this instance I've loaded in the whole flat generic truss from the truss library in Revit. Okay, And we can pick lines or we can draw our truss normally. In this instance I'm just going to draw it normally first of all. So we're going to draw it from this point to this point. And as you can see, the actual bearing cord is set to the bottom. So we're going to change that bearing cord to set to top and the whole thing should move down. Yeah, perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually edit the profile. We're actually going to edit the family of the truss. And we're going to select, as you can see in this instance, everything that was not a part of the top cord. So I'm just actually going to close that and not save it. And I'm going to go back to the family. So go into the edit family there. You can see that this is our standard truss family makeup and I'm going to select every element below our top cord and I'm going to delete it away. Then loading into project we're going to override the existing version and its parameter values. I'm going to press OK. And now you can see that we have um, both our top and our bottom cord in this instance. Okay. And again just checking the integrity of the family. Everything is gone. Yep. So. Now we can then use the truss attach and detach top and bottom function. Now this is where things get a little bit fun because we can essentially select our truss, we can press attach top bottom, we can select the roof and as you can see our top cord has moved into alignment with the roof okay and our bottom cord has remained. We can basically select our bottom cord, delete it after unpinning it and we're left with just the top cord. The one thing to note is that this won't schedule with your standard beams and you need to be very careful when selecting because you can either select the whole truss or you can select just the beam after tabbing. So you need to be careful with that. Finally, what's really strong about this in terms of the presentation of the members is that this automatically updates with the changes in the architectural roof layout. So I can edit the profile of the architectural roof layout maybe make it a little bit more severe in some points. Press finish. And as you can see, the beam is now updated 
to follow the new profile of the roof. So that's step four on how to attach beams to a sloped architectural roof in Revit. Step five, how to model a curved beam or arch structure in Revit across all three axes. A special shout out has to go to the Revit Kid for this one. Uh, make sure to check out revitkid.com or, or blogspot.com, I think it is, or his YouTube channel. He's actually a phenomenal tutor and um, he's definitely worth a follow. I'll leave a link for him down below, actually. Um, so anyway, how to model a curved arch structure in Revit using structural beams. Okay, so we want to actually turn beams through the X, Y, and Z axis at the same time. And there's no standard way of modeling this, unfortunately. So one of the suggested ways of doing this is to actually, first of all, go into architecture tab and under components, create a model in place component. Here, we're going to scroll down and pick generic models. Pressing OK, we're going to call this um, beam host. Okay. And that therein lies the trick. This is actually going to be called beam host. We're going to host our beam to this shape that we're going to mass. Okay. So what we need here is the revolve tool. Okay. So we're going to press solid revolve. And then we're going to pick our axis line first of all. And you can see here that I've already pressed entered a reference plane before we started. To put in a reference plane yourself, simply press or P and draw the line that you want. So I'm going to pick the axis line. You can draw the axis line independently anyway, but in this instance, I'm going to pick line. And we've set the reference plane as our point of revolution. Now we can simply draw our shape. So in this instance, I think we're going to draw a circle. I'll expand that out actually. And I'm just going to move that proud there for the moment, okay? And we're going to finish our edit mode. And now you can see that we kind of have this rhombus shape now, basically a donut in space, okay? But the thing about it is our revolve doesn't have to go a full 360 degrees, so we can select this shape, and then I'm going to set this start angle to 300 and the end angle to 240, which gives us a 60 degree point of rotation. Perfect. So now you can see we've got 60 degree rotation. The important thing I want you to note is this curvature here. This is the curvature that the beam is going to be assigned to across the three axes. All right. So I'm going to finish that mode there and I'm going to go back to our level two. Okay. And as you can see, here's our generic shape left. In this instance, I'm going to select this and I'm going to move it to our reference plane. And then I'm going to move it a further 65 millimeters. Then I'm going to mirror it and I'm going to copy on both sides. And now we have two shapes like such. Okay. And I've completely under egged that because I have a feeling that I actually had my view range cutting off here rather than above. So I'm just going to, on the right hand side, I'm going to move this a notional 4900 and a notional 4900. Yeah, okay, that's looking a little bit better. Okay, now here's where the fun part happens again. I'm going to press um, wireframe here and we're going to select BM as before. Again, we're going to pick our member type and this type is going to be a lightweight member on 127 and we're going to select pick lines. And you can see that it picks half of the, the circle shape at a time that's moving through three axes. So there it's selected one, and there it's selected the other. Now, as you can see, as a default, it actually puts it, when you do it this way, it puts it in the wrong orientation. So I'm gonna increase the size so this is a little bit more evident. Here we have four, five, sevens instead. And you can see that it's actually after creating our members in the weak axis from the compression sense. So we want to turn these through 90. So in our cross section, you can turn that through 90 degrees. Now, we can maybe edge these a little bit closer if we want them to touch. Going back to our level two, um, I'm going to go to my view range and I'm gonna set the top and the bottom. That would be absolutely enormous. We'll try uh, 40,000 instead, <laughs> just in case. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And now we can select this full shape on our beam and we can move edge to edge there. So let's assume that we kind of have a some sort of junction between these two members, some sort of connection that just needs them to to um, to kiss off each other rather than actually be connected. 
And quite simply then, after all this is said and done, you can just select your two in-place generic models and delete them away. And you are left with your curved beam running in all three axes. So guys, that concludes this video on how to create curved beams in Revit in one, you know, multiple different ways. As ever, if you've liked the content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, head over to 8020bim.com. I've actually got a link for this blog post breaking this down as a step-by-step -step written format below. I advise you to check it out if you prefer more of a linear step-by-step -step format than a video. It also accounts for um, kind of a slower uh, working process rather than me just talking quickly through everything. As ever, I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and I'll see you for the next one. Take care of yourselves now. Bye-bye.